Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and today we're doing a little educational piece on how to fish bobber and eggs and maybe some meat on there for Spring Chinook. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down here, hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, we're Addicted Fishing. We do educational, inspirational and entertaining content for people like you that want to learn more about fishing and go have more fun on the river. So if you guys want to learn more about how to fish all this meat for Spring Chinook, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So first things first, if you're fishing for Chinook anywhere in the world, a lot of times these fish are going to be more bait driven. I like to use all kinds of different methods to catch them, but one of the most key ways to catch them is with some sort of bait. And today what we're talking about is some sort of shrimp, some sort of fish, anchovy, this is actually a, a smelt, and roe in particular. So what we're going to talk about today is a heavy bobber and egg setup for fishing in deep dark pools where these fish reside. We're gonna take you guys after we show you the setup and some of the bait and actually show you how to fish some Chinook water and show you the methods and show you how it, what it takes to actually get in front of these fish and catch them. But first things first, what we're gonna talk about here is our rod selection. Today I have an Okuma SST 15 to 50 pound rated meat stick. Uh, this is a salmon herring rod and it's a 10 and a half foot rod. You don't necessarily need that heavy a rod, but what helps a lot of the time with that heavy rod, one, is fighting these big fish, but two, it's casting these heavy setups. What I have this reeled with is a Okuma cold water line counter reel. You don't need the line counter, it's actually unnecessary, but that's the reel I had on here today. We were out doing some other fishing and it actually works really well for this adaption. The line counter can kind of get in the way sometimes, so any kind of low profile, bigger end uh, bait casting reel is gonna work great. I'm gonna always recommend a bait caster for this sort of setup, mainly because it's easier to cast that heavy lead rather than using some sort of spinning reel where you're trying to hold it with your finger and cast all that weight, and it makes it a lot more difficult to cast, and you end up getting a lot more tangles because you get that pendulum effect as it flies out into the river. So, the 15 to 50 pound rod, I like a 10 and a half footer so that I have enough, enough rod to actually get that line up and off the water. Anything under about nine foot is not gonna fish quite as well. But fish what you have if you have it. What I have this line with is a 50 pound tough line braid. I like the 50 pound for this because you want to, again, be able to get that, that big fish on the bank, but you also want to be able to pull out of snags when you're using this heavy lead and just bust the lead off instead of break your whole setup. I have that run all the way down straight to my float here. What I have is a three ounce float. You can use anywhere up to a four or five ounce. It depends on how deep of water you're going to be fishing. If you're fishing any kind of normal run, six to 10 feet, you can go with like a one to a three ounce bobber setup. But today we're fishing some bigger stuff and some of the holes on the river I'm fishing today are a lot deeper. So I'm going with a three ounce bobber and a three ounce lead. I'm running that braid straight to my swivel setup here. And you can take a Sharpie and actually black that line out if you're worried about the color of that braided line. But it's unnecessary in this situation because this is what we're using. So I'm gonna go all the way down to quite a big, and not a size two swivel setup. And all I've done is just taken your normal snap swivel, and a, or a barrel swivel and a snap. And all I've done is I've just tied the heavy 50 pound test onto the top end that's gonna have the lead. And that's because I wanna be able to pull on this end to pull that lead off if I'm getting snagged and not pull from my leader end and, and in turn break my leader off or fray it up if I get snagged. So what I have down here, the water's a little clear today, you can go anywhere from a 10 all the way up to a 30 pound test for your leader line. What I have for my leader line here is fairly short. What I got is 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, this is a tactical fluorocarbon, so it's a little bit, you know, it's very little visibility down there to those fish. And what you can see here is I have a fairly short leader. Why I'm using that short leader is so that that bait stays in the same depth as that weight. If you use a long leader, a five, six foot leader, and you don't add any weight to the middle of your line, that weight will go down to the bottom, and if you're using a big, uh, big you know, bait setup, your bait's gonna be floating up at the surface or be down below wherever you're fishing. So I would go with a fairly short, about two, two and a half foot leader, all the way down to my three-aught Mustad bait hook which I have tied with a bait loop on here. And if you guys want to learn more about how to tie knots, be sure to go down to our page, Addicted Fishing, click that link, and go in and see some of those knot tying tutorials and some of the other tutorials that we have on there for you. So I got my two-aught rig here, or my three-aught hook. 
I like a bigger hook for this adaption, one, because we're fishing for big fish, and two, because we're fishing a lot of bait. If you use a smaller hook and you put big baits on, it's gonna cover up your hook gap, and you're not gonna have as successful of hookups when you do have that bobber down and reel down and set hook on those fish. I like to have a little bit of that hook sticking out so there's something to grab onto. Next, we're gonna jump over to the bait. You can see I have some row here. This is just a normal, I think this is actually steelhead row that I have, but any kind of salmon row works. This is a little bit hotter here, and what I mean by that is it has quite a bit of sulfite in it. Spring Chinook are very finicky creatures, so you're gonna wanna use a couple different eggs. One of the best ways to go at these fish is go to the river with multiple styles of eggs. Even if you're buying them from the store, buy two different brands that look different, that are maybe a different color. But two different cures is gonna be important. Maybe one that's very natural, and maybe one that has a lot of sodium or a lot of sulfite or a lot of different scents in it that's gonna turn those fish on. What you can see I have here next to it is a smell. Normally, we wouldn't even use these smelt. A lot of people do, some people don't. But smelt, herring, anchovy, any kind of sardine, any kind of meat on the end of your hook is gonna up your chances of catching these fish. It really helps because those fish are coming from the ocean fresh. They've been out in the ocean feeding on these little critters their entire lives. And once they get to the river and they're stuck in these confined areas, you're gonna offer them something that they're familiar with. That is, some sort of smelt or meat or anything other than just the eggs itself. You can see I have some coon shrimp sitting here next to it, any kind of sand shrimp, or basically any other kind of scent or any kind of meat you can put on the hook is really gonna help you. I like to go with the old Arnie and shrimp and agar every time I can, whether it's sand shrimp or whether it's a coon shrimp. Both of those work very well, but just having different scents on there, maybe even starting with plain bait, going to a shrimp and egg, and then maybe going to a meat and egg will always up your chances of getting those finicky fish to bite. Okay, so now we're ready to set up. What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna fish a fairly large bait here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my eggs and I'm gonna cut about a one inch or so, one and a half inch piece of those eggs off so that I have a pretty fairly good sized chunk of egg there. What I'm gonna do here, so I'm just gonna take that using the skein side to hook my hook into, close those eggs together using the skein out and that way those are gonna be a little more durable for you and hold on longer. Then I'm gonna set that down. And you can see I haven't pulled my bait loop out yet. It's because I'm gonna add some more stuff. What I'm gonna do here with this with this smelt or my sardine or whatever you're gonna be fishing, I'm gonna cut it into little bite-sized chunks for those fish. I'm gonna put that right through the spine of this, through that thickest part of the meat, watching that I don't stab my fingers once it goes through there. I'm gonna push it right up against those eggs like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my bait loop out. This is the importance of that bait loop here. I'm gonna run it around my eggs and my meat there and just gently pull against it. You don't want to pull tight because as you cast and as it starts to hit the water, it'll pull tight itself. But you can see the importance of that big hook. Having that little bit of hook sticking out there, allowing that bait to fall in between the gap of the hook is very important. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit the river now, and I'm actually gonna show you guys some Chinook water and see if we can't hook one. Okay, so now we're looking at a pretty good Chinook run here, you guys. What we have is a big rapid coming down into a pool. This pool, I know from experience, has about a, a drop off and it goes from, from about six to eight to 10 foot deep. And so knowing that, I'm gonna know how to set my bobber stop depth. A lot of times a good way to do it without getting your stuff snagged and not wasting your bait is start short and slowly work your way deeper. I know this spot's probably over six feet deep, so I'm gonna start my bobber stop at about six feet, make my first couple casts, and then I'm gonna make small adjustments and in small increments and work my way down to the bottom until I see my bobber start to lay over and touch bottom. It's very crucial with using these heavy weights that you don't set your bobber too deep to start with because it's gonna snag instantly when you least expect it. So I have my bobber stop here, and it's this little red Bo Mac bobber stop, and that's what's gonna adjust my depth up and down. I like to use this little cheater on top here so I can make sure I'm sinking down and it's actually getting to my bobber every time. But what I have here is about four and a half feet. I'm gonna go all the way to about six to start with, and then we're gonna cast this thing out there. Now casting this is very key. You don't wanna wing it too hard. You don't wanna throw this too hard to set up because what happens is if you get that boomerang effect where you have that weight and that bait swinging back and forth, you're either gonna one, throw your bait off, or two, it's gonna get tangled around your line and you're not gonna be effectively fishing once it is down in the depths. So what I'm gonna do here is I identified my spot. I have a nice deep Chinook run here. I'm gonna cast upriver at 45 and I'm gonna slowly work this past me, making sure that bobber is standing straight up and down and making sure I'm not hitting bottom. So as that goes through there, you guys, you can see how that bobber is standing straight up and down. I'm not dragging too dramatically bad, and I'm gonna work from the inside of the run all the way out. What I always say with every kind of salmon or steelhead is you wanna start your first cast where you can't see bottom. 
So what I've done here is, yeah, I could cast clear to the other side, but I can tell right here it drops off to a proper depth where those fish might be sitting. So I start my first cast semi-close. I'm gonna walk it all the way down in here, keeping my rod tip high, keeping as much line up off the water as I can, and slowly let that drift into where I start to see it hang up on the bottom there. The one thing you don't wanna do with these bait setups is pull them out of the run too quickly. If you know that spot's good, if you know it's a spot those fish can sit, let your bait sit there and soak for a few minutes or a few seconds, however long you know it's gonna work out given the right situation or given the hole. So I'm gonna, I got it down there in that little back eddy. It's still bobbing up and down. I know I'm not on the bottom, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna let that scent get spread around the hole. And the thing about the Chinook is they're very scent oriented. So if they see that or they smell it, they're gonna come closer to that bait and come and chomp on it. Okay. So now that I made my first cast through there, I saw I wasn't hitting bottom. I'm gonna reel in, and I'm gonna again adjust my depth in a small increment here, about six inches or so on this first time. Go up about six inches. Pull that bad boy in. And again, I'm gonna send it back up at 45 degrees, making sure I don't throw that bait too hard. You can kind of see that boomerang effect that happened there as that started to spin as it went out there. That's what you wanna to try to limit as much as possible. I'm gonna keep that line high up off the water, making sure I'm not getting a lot of line drag there. And look at that drift, that's perfect. Sitting right in the strike zone, moving nice and slow, and going right through that transition water where those fish don't have to work too hard to sit in these deep pools. A lot of times these fish go to these pools for protection. You can catch salmon in any kind of water, whether it's fast or slow or deep or shallow, but in a midday situation like this, I'm fishing in this bait, these fish are gonna be moving in and actually sitting in these deep pools for cover, because they're exposed, the water's kind of clear, and they're not gonna be able to sit in six inches of water where it might be easiest for them. They're gonna sit in these deeper pools and relax and wait for either the water to drop or rise so that they can take off and start heading up river. Okay, so the second cast is done with you guys. I'm gonna bring it back in, just like I did before. I'm gonna grab that bobber stop, I'm gonna go up about another six inches or so. And by doing this, you guys, you're gonna save yourself gear and you're gonna start catching a lot more fish. The worst thing you can go do is go to a hole that you don't know, set your bobber stop at one depth and cast and cast and cast until you're out of bait. Adjusting depths going up and down and sometimes these fish will sit suspended. So starting shallow and working your way down is crucial in trying to find these springers. All right, so on that cast at the very end there, I got a little hung up, lost my bait. So we're gonna go rebait, show you how to put a shrimp on there, a coon shrimp this time, and we're gonna run a couple more casts through here. Okay, so I got my bait here. Again, skein out, and I'm gonna take my shrimp here. What I like to do with these shrimp is kinda unconventional. I'm gonna go right through the tail here, pull it back through, and put that thing right through there, trying to grab as much of that tail, much of the meat on that tail as I possibly can here. Again, pulling that nice and light. You don't wanna go too crazy. I'll cut the whiskers off here. And we're ready to go now with a different bait. And this is a method that I really like to try to do, using different baits and switching your bait up with each different rebate. So I first cast, so I went through there, I had the, the eggs and the, the meat. This time I'm gonna switch to the coon shrimp. If I had some sand shrimp, I'd go on my next series of rebaiting, put the sand shrimp on, and so on and so forth, going back and forth through those different baits. Come on, right there, right there. All right, so that was my best drift yet. I'm gonna go another six inches deeper. I'm gonna guess that this time I'm gonna start probably hitting bottom, so I'm gonna be real tentative. When I drop that weight through my lead, or my lead through my bobber, I'm gonna actually wash it really carefully and make sure it doesn't start dragging too much at the beginning. Okay, yep, so you now look over here, guys. You can see now when I finally made it too deep that that's what it looks like when it's too deep. If that's gonna be your first cast through there and you see it doing that, you're gonna reel up immediately before you waste your good bait and before you waste your setup. You slide your stuff down in small increments, always about six inch increments, and then you're gonna fish it back through there. So now I'm set a little too deep, but I'm not getting snagged yet, so I'm gonna let that drag through there, and then I'm gonna start working my way back up in the water column. All right, everyone, so apparently they're not biting in this hole today, but I hope this helped you guys learn a little bit more on the technique and the style of fishing for these spring Chinook with bait and a bobber rod setup. If you guys want to learn more about this stuff, be sure to drop a comment below with what you want to see and whether or not you like to fish for spring Chinook or any kind of Chinook for that matter. This method goes all over for every kind of fish that you can fish for, being salmon, steelhead, trout, whatever else. But drop a comment below, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to go down here and subscribe and to hit that little bell notification so that you see when these videos are coming out every day.
Again, we appreciate you guys so much for tuning in today. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.